Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira. I'm a professor in the Department of Computer Science at the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Brazil. And I do research on compilers. Today, I will tell you about a particular static analysis that LLVM performs. That's called region analysis. Uh, this analysis groups the basic blocks that compose the program into what are called single entry, single exit regions. So, for instance, if this graph is the control flow graph of a program, then we can identify multiple regions like that, with a single entry node and a single exit node. First of all, we have the region that encompasses the whole CFG. It's easy to see that this region has a single entry node, which is the entry of the function. It also has a single exit node, which is the exit of the function. And then we have subregions within that region. For instance, here I have a subregion with the loop in the left side. And subregions can have other subregions themselves. Regions are nested within each other. These are the non trivial single entry, single exit regions of this example. Let's call them CZ regions for short. The other CZ regions that I have not shown are trivial, for they contain only one basic block, I mean uh, only one node. As an exercise, if you want to, you can check that each CZ region is indeed CZ, I mean it contains one single entry and one single exit. That works even for the regions that contain cycles within. I will not be showing what we can do with regions. Uh, the goal of this class is just to show how to invoke an LLVM pass. And nevertheless, grouping basic blocks in regions is useful for many things like automatic parallelization, or fast SSA construction, or computing control dependencies that helps to build program slices. We can use program slices to, ex to extract functions from within functions, for instance. Something very cool about control dependencies is that we can use these notions to detect time-related side channels in programs. If you want to know how to use CZ regions to detect side channels, I recommend this paper, which contains implementation built on top of LLVM. Anyways, LLVM gives us a data structure that groups the CZ regions into a tree. This tree is called the Program Structure Tree. The algorithm to compute the Program Structure Tree is available in a paper from 1994. Just to illustrate what LLVM gives you, consider this program. What the program does is not important. We can only care about its structure. Here's the CFG of the program, and we don't really care much about instructions within each basic block. Let's check only the graph formed by the basic blocks. LLVM will group these basic blocks into nested CZ regions. You can see the regions on the right side. This grouping of blocks into regions is performed by something called the region analysis. Let's implement a pass to walk over the regions that LVM gives us. That's the header file of our analysis. The whole header file, I mean. It's not very big. I will be using the legacy pass manager, by the way. All that we need for this example is to implement this class, which I've called regions ex. It contains only a handful of methods. We will have to implement two of these methods, which are run on function and get analysis usage. Let's start with the latter, which is simpler. Here it is, get analysis usage. The method itself has only two lines. The first line explains to LVM that we'll be using region analysis. This analysis is made available to us by the class region info pass. The other line is there just to say that we are preserving all the information collected by LLVM thus far. I mean, our pass will not transform the code in any way. Ah, remember that we must import region info so that we can have access to region info pass. We can do this in the CPP file. 
Now let's get back into our header file. It remains to be implemented the random function method. For this analysis, all that we want to do is to print out information about each region that constitutes the function. Here's the implementation of our random function method. It contains four lines. Don't worry, we will go over all of them. First of all, we get a reference to the region info class. That's what the first line is doing. Then we get a pointer to the tree of regions. We do this by capturing a reference to the root of the tree of regions. We use the get top level region method from region info to do it. Then we will need to visit these regions. We will visit them recursively, like we traverse a tree. Here's the visit method. It's also rather small. Let's go over this part. First, it prints information about the region. I will show this method, print log, later on. Notice that after we process the region IMEM, after we print region info, we will traverse the children regions. In other words, we iterate through the list of children in the region, invoking visit recursively over all these children. But let's get back into print log. This method prints information about the region, as I had said before. Here's the implementation that I wrote. The goal of this implementation is just to show you different parts of the LVM API to manipulate regions. Notice that each region has a name. We can also check if the region is outermost, I mean to say, if the region is not contained within any other region. We can also check the nesting level of a region and that's how far from the root region is any given region. The top level region has depth zero, by the way. We could read the entry basic block of the region. Here I'm reading the entry basic block and printing its string name. Next, I'm iterating over every basic block that constitutes the current region that we are visiting. I'm just printing the name of these basic blocks, by the way. And then I'm printing the exit of the region. Notice that not every region has an exit block. Some don't, like the outermost region of a function does not have an exit block. And that's why we need to check if the exit is available. Oh, remember to import the interfaces that we require to write this method, namely region iterator and the LVM implementation of the output stream. This analysis is thus implemented onto two files, a header file and a CPP implementation file. Anyways, once the analysis is ready and compiled, we can invoke it. You will need to prepare a bytecode file. We'll invoke the analysis onto this file. So let me compile a program here with Clang to produce a .ll file. Then, just to make the bytecode more palatable, let me add five functions to it and rename the variables. And that's how we invoke the path that we've just created onto the newly produced bytecode file. This part of the command line locates the library of my path. I've called this path regions.ex. Not sure you remember, but we had this line into our header file. This line registers the path with this command line flag, regions.ex. Oh, remember to pass the full path to the library where the path is stored in the command line. Anyways, uh, we've shown before how to compile all of the passes. And that's the output of our region analysis. Here, I'm showing you the result of visiting two different regions within a program. I guess you can relate the different commands that we have used in the print log method with the output that we are getting. Like here's the name of the two regions that we have visited. And here's the list of basic blocks. Anyways, I will let it up to you to stop the video and check what each method on the right side is producing on the output on the left side. If you get stuck, you can write me with questions. Also, you can take a look into the implementation of region analysis. I'm putting a link uh, right here. And that's it. Thank you.